Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome to the studio today. It's quite a nice day again. I know I always talk about the weather, but the weather does create a good mood if the sun is shining, and the sun is shining. So I hope everybody's in a great mood. We're sorry about the little hiccup at the beginning. We weren't sure whether um, we were live or not, but obviously you're here now, so we'll make the most of a lovely afternoon. Grab yourselves a cup of tea if you are crafting along. So if you are new to the channel, my name is Tony Derrick and I'm a guest presenter over on Creating Craft. And if you have never seen the channel before and you've just managed to come across us right now, don't forget to click the subscribe button and that lets you know when we are live in studio and you can get any inspiration. You do not have to buy our products. We do like you to buy our products, but you don't have to. There's at home that are probably bigger than this room. I'm certain of it. So you can dig out your lovely stuff and have a play. So welcome to all the lovely ladies that join me every single day and gents of course. So Maxine, Tracy, Amanda, Pat Pepper, Paula, Tracy, Jackie, Joe, May, Enid. Good afternoon everyone. I'm just happy to actually sit down for a second. We've been packing orders all day. I just wanted to tell you a little bit of something about the orders. So as you all know we've been doing all of the orders ourselves. And I just wanted to explain a couple of things that we've been doing along the way. Um, obviously, since the lockdown, we've been getting regular government guidelines about what we should, shouldn't be doing, how we should be packing orders, what we need to be putting in place. And um, orders coming into the building and having to be left for 48 hours and things like that. I'm finally happy to say that nearly everything is out of the door. <sighs> a fresh set of gloves for every order. And as you can imagine, we sold over a thousand brushes. So it's been difficult and this is, this is the result. And um, Tim's hair, I probably could actually get in a ponytail right now. So we're happy to say it's nearly complete. Thank you for your patience. Um, and as of next week, we are hoping to slowly phase staff back into the building to give us a bit of breathing space to look after what we like to look after and that is our customer service and our orders and all the good stuff. So, it's time to breathe. Thank you so much. I think it's been about 10 weeks, hasn't it? And I'll tell you, it's been a tough one. Um, uh, and I do sit here and I smile and I'm happy to sit here and smile. That is not a forced smile. I absolutely love the studio. And you give back to me what I give to you tenfold. You all know that. But I am absolutely over the moon that it's now coming towards the end of it. Staff are phasing back into the building. Things are getting back to a little bit of normality and you know we can have a little bit of family time and concentrate more on designs and things like that so i'm saying right now thank you to every single one of you that i've ordered being patient as you all have been so thank you very very much so um let's craft shall we so yesterday's um card i think you all loved because there were so many of you rushed off to have a go I did see that some of them had gone in the bin and I did see that some of you had posted them but they were really really good guys and I always think that my cards maybe look a little bit better on camera or in the photographs I don't know why um, and I think that's what happens sometimes when you do take a photograph so don't be harsh on yourself and say it's not like mine we don't expect it to be like mine as long as you've enjoyed the technique and the card is finished and it's good enough to give to somebody and put a smile on somebody's face then you've done a good job haven't you so um, if you do have any questions you can ask if any of the ladies on here can help me out with any questions then we do do that as well and don't forget um, i do post the cards after studio and um, we do do lots of giveaways with the cards made in studio and sometimes we do send the products that we use it depends it depends if i've got my own personal stash or if it's an extra one that i've got knocking around so have we got any new um, ones today new names oh there seems to be some names on there that i'm not familiar with so welcome to the channel it's a lovely channel you will pick up some inspiration whether you like it or not or whether you've come for a nosy or whether you're just passing by because you're actually on youtube and it's popped up that there is a live video going on so welcome to the channel everybody so in today's studio we are going to be using the lovely explore stamp which is this super huge stamp here we did a tuition on it yesterday and that is on youtube the inspiration never disappears don't forget that and the card you can just see here is the one that we did yesterday with the lovely um, clear embossing technique. So we'll be in studio using this one today and then again tomorrow. 
I did also just quickly want to show you the two stamps that we launched on Monday ready for the craft along next week. So we have this beautiful flower one here with the daisies and the tulips which is a super huge one and the samples are just over my shoulder on the right hand side you'll be able to see those whilst we're actually crafting and then we have the lovely pair of hands and the beautiful love heart in the centre there. Um, and I'm pleased to say that this one is in front. Can you believe that? And it, that's the, what I was saying about um, our Craft Academy. It's about pushing your boundaries. And a lot of you are doing what I'm doing and buying things that you wouldn't normally buy to two techniques and things like that. So that is fabulous. Uh, but we do love these ones. We do love flowers too. So it's personal preference. And again, any of the inspiration in the show, you can um, take with you and maybe craft along with the stuff that you have in your stash already. So let's craft. So as you can see here, I have a piece of card and I've already taped it down. So if you are crafting along, this is just a piece of A5 card, half of an A4 piece of paper, and I've just took it, stuck it down here just to help with my ink blending and just to stop it from moving all over my table. So I'll just give you a second or two if you are crafting along, because I know a lot of you do like to craft along, just to grab some tape. Now it can be low tack tape, masking tape, painter's tape, whatever you've got in your stash. If you haven't got any, don't worry, it doesn't have to be um, taped down. Okay, so Liz ordered the daisy. Was it you that wanted it, Liz? It was so funny, because when I was walking around and I found the two daisies, I'm like, oh, what was the lady's name? Who wanted it? I can't remember. So I'm pleased you found it, Liz. Well done. And Amanda as well found the daisy. So that means it's out of stock because I did only find two. So, um, is there a colour swatch for Generation Inks? If you go to our website, we do have the colour swatches that you can pop in the colours yourself. But if you go to um, one of the tabs across the top, and I think it says Generation Inks, there is a short video on there showing you the Generation Inks and how it works and things like that. I don't think we've actually... Let's just have a look. Oh, it's okay, Tim's posted the link for the lady. Thank you, everybody. So this piece of cardstock down here then, what we're going to do today is we're going to create a little bit of a snow drifty scene. So this is just to encourage you, because I know all of you will be getting your brushes soon and will be wanting to play and try them out. Um, hopefully you're all going to start getting them imminently so please let me know when they do start coming through and then I can breathe a little bit more <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create um, like an atmospheric scene with foreground and background so you all really really enjoyed this technique yesterday so I think the encouragement to just maybe pick up a blending brush and a little bit of ink is all that's needed for you to step outside your comfort zone so I'm going to try and do that again today so all I've done is I have a black um, circle here. Now I didn't have a, um, a die cut, I didn't have one to hand. So all I did was I drew around my <laughs> low tack tape and I fussy cut it out. As you can see, it is not the best, but it's a circle and it's a suggestion. So if you are crafting along, you just need to draw around something that's circular, maybe a lid off your embossing powder, a lid off your tin, a lid off or draw around the base of a bottle and you just need to cut around it okay so what we're going to do if i've got time i'm going to try and create two scenes and what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to create quite a mystical moody one and then i'm going to try and create a like a lovely um purpley night sky as if the sun's just about to disappear just have a drink And it'll show you how different they will look when you swap out the colours. So on this one I'm doing landscape. And on the other one hopefully I might have a go at portrait. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So let's just create some space. So I have my distress inks. You can use your generation inks if you want to. It's just that I've only got three to hand. But I need more colours. So I'm going to use the distress inks. Um, and I'm going to go with... The ones that I'm using, if you do want to craft along, the colours are Blueprint Sketch, um, Hickory Smoke, Wilted Violet, and shall we pop a bit of coral in there? Abandoned Coral. So a purple, a blue, a grey and an orangey red, they're the colours I'm using. So if you haven't got the Distress Inks, um, 
grab some of your ink pads that might have similar colours. If you haven't got a whole host of colours, greys and blacks look absolutely gorgeous. Browns look gorgeous. So it's just working with what you've got in your stash. So what I'm going to do is this black circle that we've cut around, hopefully you've all been able to do one now. I'm just going to pop a little bit of low, a little bit of um, just my tape gun behind and I'm just going to secure it in place on this piece of um, cardstock here. And then we'll be able to peel it away when we're finished. So I'm just going to go, you can pop it anywhere on your page, but I'm just going to go, we'll say there, that's, that's where it fell out of my hand. Move it down a bit and we'll just secure it in place. Okay, like so. And then I'm just going to grab a piece of white cardstock, okay, and I'm going to create my a little bit of a snow drift effect. So this is just an A4 A5 piece of card. I'm just going to create myself a little bit of a, like, I'll show you rather than try and explain. So it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be smooth. If you like a textured look, you can tear it so it's got more of a rugged feel. So there we can see, so you can see the edge of the card there. There we go. It's just created some like appearance of some hills. It's just a suggestion. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, just clean my card off here, is I'm going to try and capture some of that like um call it a moon, a sun, whatever you what sort of ever scene you're trying to build there. And I'm just gonna pop it down here and I'm just gonna hold it in place. Now you could, if you wanted to, tape it down even further, pop some tape down if you haven't got the best of hands, maybe you've got a little tremor, it is okay. Um but I'm just going to hold it so I can quickly get some colour down on there. So let's go first with, uh, let's try Hickory Smoke. Now, when I come to choose my colours, guys, I don't really know where it's going to go. I never know where it's going to take me. Um, I just go for it and if it doesn't look good, it just goes in the bin. So if you can get around your, the mindset of it's a piece of card and if it don't work, let's do it again with a different colour, then um, you won't be self-critical of yourself just as much. I've already seen a comment on there saying that's the problem choosing colours. You don't have to get it right first time. So just go for it. Pick some colour, whole bunch of colours you like. If you do it and it looks like a muddy mess, you'll put it in bin and we'll do it again. You know, that's the enjoyment of it, isn't it? And learning, I guess. So I'm just going to use my um, blending brush here. Now it's good to have a piece of scratch paper at the side just to get rid of the excess ink. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some colour onto this piece of card. So let's get our ink pad in place. So I've only got the little ones. If you have got the bigger ones, you're probably going to get a quicker and a better coverage than me, but I've only got the little ones. So I'm just starting at the base of our, what, what we're calling it, a snow drift. And I'm just getting some colour down. Now initially it probably won't look like you're getting any colour down at all because you're working basically against a sheet of white card. But it's not until you move it away, look, you can see where it's going. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that back in place because I really do want to have a lovely um, sort of atmospheric -y look, if that's such a word. So I'm trying to get some of this grey dark as I possibly can in this centre part here. And you know, if it doesn't look right, I might add some orange, the coral, orange, or some of that wilted violet to try and give it a lift. But I'm going to start lighter, as I do to encourage you guys as well. Start lighter, and you can always cover and build on, can't we? So I'm actually pressing on quite hard here. And as you can see, there isn't much colour going down. So I think probably we've hit the depth of that hickory smoke, that's probably as dark as it's going to go. So I'm not going to um, work on it any further. I'm just going to leave it as is and swap it out for another colour. So I'll pop that back in place, look. And then shall we go with, let's go with blueprint sketch. Enid, I hope you're well, sweetheart. So I'm going to use the blue this time and I'm just going to go 
again from the base up and add some lovely blue in there and this is going to give you a two-tone effect which will be nice hopefully <laughs> like I said I never know where the colours are going to go I do literally just go for it so you can see we've got some lovely like blue up there pop it back in place and I'm try and get some blue up here too when you've made one you probably really like it and it will naturally encourage you to pick up a whole set of colours and try um, try in different colours too it will be a natural progression for you so you can see there we've got some colour down already haven't we which is super super nice so I'm just going to clean my brush I'm just going to add the abandoned coral behind our, we can call it moon, sun. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of the orange around. Hopefully I'll get some colour on there. Doesn't look like I'm getting much on there, but I can see... So basically I'm just twirling around that black die cut or cut circle, whatever you've got going on. Make sure it doesn't move. Look, it is moving. Don't move. And you can use post-it notes and things like that for this technique. It's just that I don't have them. I'm just going to pop that back in place. So there we can see you've got like a little bit of a hue coming from behind your image on there so what we're going to do now is I'm going to create a different shape here because we don't want it like a uh, uniform we want it to be um, snow drifts are never uniform so I'm going to create myself a different one this time so I'm going to go oh try not to do them all the same So I've got a different one this time. Can we see how we've changed it there? So when we come to pop this one down, we'll have a different one. Okay, so let's just get rid of that piece of paper. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the sun because the sun is behind. Can you see that there? And then what we're going to do is we're going to create another snow drift. So I'm just going to move it down a little bit, maybe angle it a little bit. Can we see that there? And then we're just going to get some colour again. Now I'm just going to go with the, with the blue on this one. Let's go a lighter blue this time to create a snow-like effect. So that's the sort of effect of our sky. So you're going to need maybe a lighter blue. So let's go mermaid. No, let's not. Let's just see what I've got going on. Yeah, let's go mermaid balloon. Balloon. Mermaid lagoon. We'll just angle it a little bit so it looks a little bit different, okay? And then with this one, just see what it's going to look. This is going to create the appearance of snow, maybe, while well, I'm hoping. So I'm just going to brush some of the blue. We will come back to our sun, so don't worry about it. So I'm just lightly popping that blue on there, and this is hopefully going to give us a little bit of a snowy feel. Hopefully, she says. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to do this a few times. I'm going to keep the snow drift the same shape now. I'm just going to swap it out a little bit, maybe. Maybe create another little one here, up to that line.
maybe add a little bit of darker blue on this one too so it just stands out from the rest see there now so it's coming together isn't it so it's about creating that lovely scene so we've got our sort of skyline with a hue which is going to go around whatever's going to be here and then let's pop one down here straight across the base here and let's go lighter again first of all everyone's okay apart from we've got some teeth issues going on teeth are the worst so I'm just getting that lovely color laid down there there we go come and see how we've got our, our lovely hills coming together so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my cut piece here and I'm just going to take it up Excuse me a second. I'm just going to take it up here. So you see, because we need to get this snow drift to go, the moon is behind the snow drift. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop some colour across here. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take one of the edges. It doesn't have to be straight. Remember, the snow drifts are not straight. I'm just going to pop a bit of blue down here to make sure our... You see that there? So it just pushes the sun into the background is that okay so is everybody with me so far <laughs> everybody's with me so far looking good oh yes right so what we need to do now is we need to get it brought closer to your eye so we need to put some colour around here so I'm going to go darker around the top so I'm just going to I've got black soot here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring some black soot into the corners and stay away from your snow drifts so okay so again you just really you are really really just watching me play here so let's get the blue so the colors that you work in you just add in more color add some more blue in here and this is a great thing about the lovely techniques the ones that we did yesterday the one that we've done today um, you can literally just thoroughly enjoy them and not have to worry is this right is this wrong because there are no, ro no rules. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some of this light blue. Sorry, what am I talking about, light blue? I'm just going to get some of the abandoned coral. Let me just clean my brush. Make sure it's clean. And I'm just going to circle into the centre of that sun just to get rid of that harsh, harsh look. You see that? It's just softened it a little bit. Do this very gently though. We're going to accent it anyway with a pen, but it just gets just puts a hue on there as well, so it gets rid of that harsh line on there. So let's bring this together slowly. So let me just make sure I get the colours on the right ink pads. So I'm just going to take this off my um, mat. I'm not going to remove the masking tape because I don't want. I'm going to remove that at the end but you can see there we've got a scene sort of going on haven't we so this is where we have to sort of like build our own lovely scene and we're going to use the stamp the explore stamp now if you don't have the explore stamp you can use your trees from our collections or other people's collections you can use anything you've got in your stash when when you're doing this technique though what it does require is maybe a little bit of masking 
you know, to stop the stamp going everywhere. Because we want to create like we've got things in the hills. There we go. So let's grab the stamp. Let me just make sure this is a clean stamp before I lay it on my artwork. Jeez, you know what's going to happen, we'll end up with two houses instead of one. Um, the blending brushes are not in stock at the moment. Um, they could potentially be later in the week. I will keep you posted on that one. So I'm just making sure the stamp is absolutely clean before I commit it to my artwork. So, I'm going to pick out lovely points of this stamp that I absolutely love. So, it's a given we love the cabin. You could pop the bridge across if you wanted to, and the tree is definitely going to be in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the cabin as if it's peeping over this drift. So, what I'm going to do, oops, nearly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my drift back into place. I'm going to pop it where I'm going to pop the cabin. And I'm going to bring in the, the cabin. Now I can twist the cabin. I can put it any way I want. There are no rules. Just remember that. And let's make it look like this cabin is just sitting in the hill. Let's bring it over here, look. Make sure it's all in place. So you can sit it up in the... Well, you wouldn't put it in the sky. That would be a, a disaster. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm just going to place this little cabin over here like so so i'm going for the cabin at the moment i'll just pick up that <laughs> that's that's the alexa telling me she doesn't know what i mean <laughs> so let's go with a black ink pad and i'm going for the little ink pad here because i'm just going to ink up the cabin now I'm inking it up all over, I'll just pull this into shot for you, there we go. So I'm inking the cabin all over, there is actually a lovely little fence in this scene as well. So I'm just inking that cabin and then hopefully my drift is in place. There is a little tree as well, so if it catches that tree, it's okay. And then we're just going to push that little cabin over that little drift. And I've used the Distress Ink here, so hopefully it's stamped okay. Just need to push it a little bit harder. Can we see there? So this looks like it's behind the drift, so let's just... I need to get some, I need to go lower on the cabin. So you can see what's happened. Let me just do this again one more time and then I'll just show you. So can we see that there? As you can, can you just see there, looking at it though, the cabin doesn't actually, it looks, it's not actually met my snow drift. That's okay, don't worry about it, because all we'll do is we'll move the drift higher and ink blend again so it's actually sat in the drift. There we go. Can we see that there? How cool is that? So we've got our cabin in there and we can tidy it up later. So we're creating our lovely scene here, guys, which is fab. Now we can create... Let's see what else we can create. So I'm just going to clean the sand. You must make sure that every time you... Um, Use the stamp and you clean it, okay? Because what will happen is when you come to move your stamp around, you'll get blank, black ink on your artwork and it will frustrate you. So make sure you give your stamp a good old clean after every stamp, whether you've used a part of it, a portion of it. Make sure you give that stamp a really good clean. No questions. No, not very many. You're all very quiet today. Are we all feeling all, or are you all concentrating on what I'm doing? <laughs> oh, you make me nervous. <laughs> so let's create a further scene on here. So what, what, what would we put in this time? Let's go for part of the tree in here, in this window here. Can we see that there? 
So I'm just going to pop that tree right up there. I'm not going to pop it all in. Make sure I'm up to my snow drift. Make sure my snow drift is in place. There we go. And I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get it so the branch of the tree is coming into that, into that sort of moon there. Can we see that? <coughs> And the great thing about this, from what I can see, is if I move that down slightly, if I ink up, if I ink up the whole of that area there, I'm going to get some like trees on the skyline too, which is great. So let's go for it, shall we? See what happens. And that's why it's important that you clean your stamps in between, okay? Roseanne, yeah, it, it does take a little bit of time and do two or three at the same time. While you've got all your stash out, do two or three at the same time. But these sorts of techniques where you build your own scenes and snow drifts and things like that, I absolutely love. By the time you've added some glitter and some splashes of water to create the effect of snow, it really, really is worth it. So let's go for the tree this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in stages um, to see how it looks. So I'm just going to hit the top of this... Um, tree here and the great thing about it is we've only set like a little map there with the snow drifts in the in some of the areas once we've got our scene built in there we can go back in with the color and add more depth and dimension there are no rules so I'm just gonna go let's see how far I've inked down this tree can we see there I'm just going to ink a little bit further down and I am going to try and get these trees in there too. And I'm just using a little ink pad here. Just a little bit better. Just make sure I'm on that sky. And again, this is why having a platform of some form really is cool. You can see there now we've got some trees down down in the down in that part. So lastly, let's see what we can do at the base. I'm just going to do as I've just told you there. Sorry. There we go. I'm going to clean this off so you can see when you do yours, these snow drifts are not perfect. They don't actually quite connect to the stamp. That's okay. We're going to make it, we're going to improve it. We just set down ourselves a little bit of colour. And this is why I did actually only set myself the task of doing. the one thing for you because I just didn't want to put myself under pressure and make a, what's the word of it, can we say pig's ear, pig's ear of it, I wanted it to at least look half decent so you would at least try, I'm just making sure my stamp is absolutely clean here, just popping some card on there. <laughs> Don't pay me to make your cards, crikey. Right, so let's just get rid of that awful piece of tissue that's stuck all over now. Let's just move our artwork up. Let's just move it up in the Eureka just simply because I want to get some more scene in there. Shall we go there? Let's go there. Let's do it. Let's do it. Does it look very straight? It doesn't look very straight, that. I 
and then this is where we fill out the portion at the bottom so let's go for it and if it's a pig's ear you won't get a picture after show <laughs> but I'm confident after we've added some snow and enhanced our drifts it's going to look nice Might have to stamp this twice actually. So we've got two cabins, one in the foreground and one in the background. Get more colour on there. we'll go with that right let's tidy this up now so it doesn't look like we've got a tree coming out of fresh air okay so I'm just going to move the magnet take my artwork out and let's dry let's just dry this off with my gun a little bit So we just need to enhance where the tree is at the top because it's floating a little bit. We need to sort of like ground it. Yes, this would make a really nice Christmas card. Hopefully that's dry enough. So because we've left our tape on there, we can still tape it back down, look. And I'm just going to enhance around the tree at the top that's floating. I'm just going to ground it. So I'll just bring this back into shot here. You see how this one's floating? We need to give it a drift to sit in so it's actually pushed back. Okay, so if you have anything floating, you just need to push it back if you can. So let me just... Um, in my hands and this is where we can really go to town with colour you can make it as atmospheric as you want let's shall we go with the dark blue this time because I don't think the light blue is going to cut it so I'm just going to clean my brush so I am going to literally try and ground this tree and as you can see there I've pop brought it down to this point here can we see that there so let's see if we can ground it See there how it's pushed it back there can we see that there so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue grounding everything else and bring it all back to life like so I'm just matching it back up and what I'm going to do is you see our house was floating I'm going to push my drift up and then we can connect our house to our drift You see now how it's now connected there we go super super easy guys see that there so let's get oh there is actually a, a drift let's see where I'm going with this drift do we need to connect a drift down oh thank you do we need to create a drift down here let's create a drift down here so because as I said we 
went in with the lighter colour, it doesn't really matter if you have to go in and maybe change your hills around a little bit like I'm having to do because that tree just did not look right when it was floating. But now that we've grounded it, it looks a little better. There we go. So let's bring it in together here. Let's just see where we're going with this. Let's create a big one here. And the one that I'm using here just to tie it all back together is the blue blueprint sketch. So we're just building it, bringing it all together. We've got a nice one going on here, look. And as I always say, please continue on with your card till the very end. As I said to you earlier, I really didn't know where this card was going and I, I would never have given up on it anyway because I do see cards right to the very end. Even if I don't like them, I will look at them for a day or two. Um, but now it's coming together. I'm quite pleased with it. You see that there? So what we need to do here, we have this white space here, don't we, where it looks like what's going on there. We need to bring that together. So I'm just going to pick up some of the blue and I'm just going to put a little bit of colour on the bottom just to bring it together. My black ink on here as well is not truly dry. So make sure you make yours absolutely dry. Can we see that there? So it's looking quite good now. Oh, do you, do you think otherwise, guys? <laughs> right, so I'm just going to leave that as is. Um, I could intensify the sky. Let's inst Don't faff. I'm told don't faff. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of purple and maybe just try and add a little bit more. Um, pizzazz to the sky so I'm just going to add a bit of purple see where it, see if it makes it any brighter maybe we'll see can't hurt anything can it I suppose I'm just using purple on the corners and maybe use a little bit of purple on the base here to tie it in it's not doing much to be honest So let's add some snow. So the great way to add snow is with your splats. So let's get a brush. And just get some water. And I'm just going to flick some of the water into that sky area here. Now, do it a little bit first. Take it off if you haven't got enough on there. Um, you can always do it again, can't you? Don't be too um, heavy-handed. So I'm just going to get some tissue here. I'm just going to let that that water reactivate that ink, and then just going to pop it on, and hopefully we'll have a bit of a snowy sky. Can we see that there? Perfect. I'm just going to do it a little bit more. just give that a second to reactivate now what I'm going to do next is um, it's personal preference if you want to play and you know move a bit of color around I've just got the gray ink pad here from the Tim Holtz a bit of gray on my little acetate sheet here so let's just get rid of that ink on there like so if you're still thinking these lines really do look harsh and I'm not quite liking them. I'm just going to show you some alternative ways to soften. So I'm just going to pick up some of this grey here. I'm just going to follow the line here and just add some grey. Now when you add the colour, don't be, don't be scared of it. <laughs> it dries back way lighter. So just drag some of the grey down and it will get rid of that awful harsh line if you don't like it. I have done a card ahead of time and I'm just going to show you in a second. I'm just going to add a bit more so it's a bit darker. So if you're thinking, oh I've absolutely ruined that, the lines are too 
the lines are too harsh, the house looks like it's um, floating in space, stick it out to the very end, get your watercolours out, enhance it, make it better if you want to, take some off, add some. See that there? So it's just softened those lines a little bit. So alternatives, any water-based inks you have in your stash really, there are lots and lots and lots on the market, so any you will have in your stash. I don't know what you'll all have to be honest. But you can see there, I've just softened those lines a little bit, made it look more snowdrifty if you want. There's actually, actually no colour on there to be honest, hardly no colour. So, I'll just dry that off with my gun. So let's remove our tape, hopefully it won't tear my card. Starting to get in a bit of a pickle here. Any questions? Would love to see that hanging on the wall, it's so beautiful Tony, wow. It's, um, it's not the best I've ever done, I have to say, but you know, I do like to play. So I'm just taking this tape off here, just be mindful when you're taking your tape off to do it slowly, we don't want to tear your lovely artwork. Then the only thing really left to do is let's make it sparkly, let's make the snow look like snow. So I don't have my glitters to hand, so I'm just going to use this what I've got and this is the stickles and this is crystal ice. So I'm just going to add some sparkle to the hills. And I'm just going to drag it down as if it's like it is snow on the hills. I'm just going to follow the line. And just soften it a little bit with my finger. Just bear in mind when you're using glitter though, if you have an artwork piece, which you would call this an artwork piece, it's not a stamped card, it's, it is artwork, just be mindful you don't want to overkill your artwork with glitter because the 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 beauty is in the, what the, what you've created the beauty is not the glitter as much as we love glitter you just need to be careful that you don't kill the image using lots of sparkle but if you've got lots of boo-boos um, and things like that and you've got things to hide then you know chuck it on chuck it on so i'm just going to pop a little bit on the roof here of this house maybe on these little trees here and then the trees in the background of this, on this snow drift here and here and here. Soften it with your finger if it's a little bit harsh. So not too much, let's pop a little bit on this one too. I'm going to leave that there, would you like to be neighbours? <laughs> So there we go, and you could heat emboss a sentiment, pop it on a Christmas card, um, you could move the trees along and maybe put a tree smack in the centre, um, I don't think there are any rules, in, in this white bit here, get your gel, in fact well I have my gel pen, let's do it, let's add some 
um, white dots for suggestion of snow. Even though we've got that muted part in the back, I am still going to go in with my gel pen. Sorry, just enjoying myself. And I'm just going to add the suggestion of snow with my gel pen. And then last but not least, to even enhance that even more, just going to grab my watercolours here. And again, as you can see, I'm absolutely just enjoying myself and just playing. And look at the state. Um, I'm just going to pop this over here. I know my glitter's wet underneath, but it's fine. And I'm just going to get some of my white, not so white, here. I'll just get it clean, so it is a clean white. So if you've got white, if you've got gouache, gouache is a little less transparent, so you'll get an even brighter white. But I don't have mine to hand, so I'm just going with the white in my pan here. I'm just going to get a lovely brush loaded with lots of pigment in there if I can so I'm just keep twizzle 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 and then I'm just going to tap and this will really give you snow do this before you take your tape off because I'm getting it all over there we go so let's just hold this one up now it's a little bit better but yeah do it with your gouache and leave your tape on right till the last minute and then you have a nice piece of artwork to go at so there we go. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, like I say, if you haven't got this product, you can use all the other good stuff in your stash. Um, and I will catch you all tomorrow at three o'clock for some more inspiration using this stamp for the final time. I need to see your mates making this one. I bet there's going to be a lot in the bin like yesterday's and I think there'll be a lot of them on the Eureka pa Facebook page. I can't wait to see them all. I'll be sat waiting patiently. Um, so let's just have a look. Go Ash, yep, Go Ash are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. They are a, a staple item in your stash and we will visit those. As soon as I get all my stuff out of the boxes, we'll be doing lots of things. So whatever you're doing, have a lovely afternoon. I hope you like it and I've inspired you in some way to dig out your stash or maybe buy the stamp. Have a lovely afternoon, everyone. Take care. See you later. Bye.